I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing fantastic. It's Friday, baby. We love fantastic Fridays. Fantastic Friday. Yes. This week, our topic has been the gift of conflict. It opened up on weekend edition of the Stress Mastery podcast with Mark Middlestead talking on the elements of meaning, meaning and conflict resolution. Mark, you got to make those shorter. On Mondays with Super Millennial, we had Stop Creating Conflict. Health Huddles this week was Body and Conflict. Meeting of the Minds was The Chaos of the Mind. And yesterday's Connection Thursday, we talked on the gift of conflict. And today's book study, we will continue A Happy Pocket Full of Money by David Cameron Gyande. Big Dave. What's going on, man? It's uh, been a good week. It's been a really good week. How about you? Any conflict this week? You're goading me, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You're goading me. <laughs> so you guys all know I'm a huge Packer fan, right? So I don't know. This is recording on Thursday before the draft. I don't know who my quarterback is. Well, this is airing, so I'm not sure. So, but we're not going to talk football on this because this is a positive podcast, okay? <laughs> I had to do it. You didn't like that introduction I did originally? That was hilarious. It was. You can't give it, it to was. him, though. No. <laughs> so this week, we've been talking on the gift of conflict and unbelievable how this chapter that David Gandhi has given us today. So we are continuing to a happy, I always get that wrong, right? A happy pocket full of money. And David Cameron Gandhi, we're on chapter 13. And to me, we've had some important chapters, but this one, is going to really set things apart. It's called Want Not Desire, But Never Ever Want. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. And it's interesting. This is going to be a good chapter. So let's jump in this. As you have seen, there is good reason to watch your words, thoughts, actions, and states. Every state and thought is acted upon precisely by the universe by law. Each word carries with it thousands of years of meaning and instructions on how it will be carried out. For example, the word jump invokes specific images in everyone's mind along with the appropriate instructions to execute it. And the universe, which has to assist in that jump, acts accordingly. Law of physics, spirit, mind-body coordination, etc. Even as you read this book, the words invoke in you certain things, some of which you can feel right now. Some people by now will excitedly know that the words used here will enable them to make big differences in their lives and that knowing is already starting to make changes unseen. And some people already know this is, this is as they read this. In regard to wealth, the most important word to watch out for is want and all its equivalents. Wanting communicates to you and to the universe that you do not have something. First mistake. And that you are in a state of not having it by wishing you did. Second mistake. The problem is compounded by the fact that wanting is a perpetual state in itself it has no finality. Think about it. You can never get what you want. Never. It only looks as if people get what they want, but they never really do. What actually happens is that very gradually they shift from the state of wanting to the other states and then they get what they wanted in the first place. But as long as they are in the state of wanting, they cannot get that which they want. Here is how the illusion of a person getting what they want works. Remember the last time you wanted to eat and you got what you wanted? You ate something. Okay, you wanted something to eat. This is a wanting state. But watch what happened next. You started to go get something to eat. You actually shifted from a wanting state to a getting state. 
which is which has finality. You then shifted to the present tense of having, and finally, you appear to have had what you always wanted. See, you never did get what you wanted when you were in a wanting state. You had to shift states. This unconscious shifting from a state of wanting to another state is easily done all the time, but only for small things. What if it were to happen for something really big, something you never had before? Would you still get it if you wanted it? Unlike food, it would be harder for you to shift unconsciously from a wanting state because you have not gone through it before. If you find yourself wanting $20, it would be easy for you to shift unconsciously from the state of wanting it to the state of getting it because you've done it before over and over. But what if you wanted a million dollars and you have never had more than $20,000 in your life? Would you be able to shift unconsciously from wanting to getting a million dollars? Most likely not. The solution is this. Never want. You can never get what you want. Wanting something very badly is worse. In your thoughts, words, states, and feelings, replace want with desire or wish. Unlike wanting, desiring does not necessarily have to mean that you do not have something. It is a very subtle difference, and some people may, may say they are the same thing, but there is, in fact, a world of difference. Some th thesauruses may even say want is interchangeable with desire, but that is simply for linguistic purposes. Remember, your thoughts are carried out with precision and perfection by the universe. It is the way the system is designed. Wanting is carried out with precision and wanting represents a perpetual state of not having. Desire is not a perpetual state of not having. In fact, it does not necessarily have to mean you do not have what you desire. It is Sad and funny to think that billions of people are kept away from what they want by such a simple little difference. It all lies in the precise execution of the universe. More precisely, it is not just the word want that should be avoided. It is the state. It helps nothing to avoid the word want but be in the state of wanting. That is useless. Language is a symbol used to represent things like states. The word want is a symbol that represents the state of wanting. It is therefore the state that you should avoid first. The symbol, the word itself, is also to be avoided so as not to invoke the state. Please, desire, but never want. Here is how the dictionary defines the word want. To be without, lack, to be destitute or needy, a defect of character, a fault, to be absent, to be deficient or lacking, to fail, not to be sufficient, to fall or come short, to lack. This is what you communicate to the universe when you want something. The universe brings you just that absence and deficiency. None of these negative definitions are included for the word desire. However, here's how the dictionary defines desire. To express a wish for, request. The natural longing that is excited by the enjoyment or the thought of any good and impels to action or effort in a continuous or possession an eager wish to obtain or enjoy. I am wealth. I am abundance, I am joy. Not needing a particular result in, a mo in the moment of thou frees your subconscious mind from all thoughts about why you cannot have a particular result. This in turn opens the path to the particular result that is consciously intended. This is one of the benefits of intending with detachment. You intend a future outcome. You are certain of it, but you are detached as to what is happening in the present moment. 
For example, assume you intend to be a millionaire, but in the present moment, events are moving in a way that suggests you are not going toward your goal. You will make the best progress if you are detached about the present moment, meaning you accept it as it is instead of fighting it and getting frustrated by it and losing hope. But regardless of your detachment, keep your certainty about your outcome becoming a millionaire in the future. Learn to enable the coexistence of intention, certainly, and detachment in your life, and life will quickly become happy and wealthy for you. Resistance and frustration will slowly fall away, and certainly all confidence will grow. You see, you cannot fail to get wealthy if your goals are clear and focused, and you are certain and faithful, and you believe. It is impossible to fail. Failure would mean breaking the unbreakable law of the universe. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Eliminate all forms of wanting. These include regretting the past, wishing things are or were different, looking forward to things, wishing, wanting, worrying, and throwing your awareness and consciousness out into the future or past. In other words, do not hold on to the past moment. Do not wish you were the next moment to come. Instead, take in the moment of now in its fullness for all the gifts it brings to you. The fastest way to create a great future is simply to intend, release, get back to enjoying here now. Wanting tells the universe to create conditions that keep you in wanting, making it impossible to have what you desire unless you get out of the state of wanting and into another state. It is a very subtle but important way of seeing life. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Never want anything. Wanting makes the universe give you the conditions that create a perpetual state of wanting. Have passion, have desire, have intentions, but want not. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Eliminate the word want from your language and the state of wanting from your thinking and being. Replace it with desire and desiring, like and liking. Wanting creates conditions of perpetual wanting. You never get what you want. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. If you ever find yourself thinking that you do not have something or that you are not something, then you are wanting. Wanting is a state of being that professes not having, lacking. It is not just a word in the spoken language. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. All new things held constant to the extent that an individual or society eliminates wanting from its language and from its state of being, so will it have wealth and happiness. If you find yourself fighting against want, reread the chapters on quantum physics and abundance. One and self and understand truly how, as it has been taught by many teachers for thousands of years, you have it all even before you ask. It has been given to you. Logically, scientifically, and spiritually, there is absolutely no reason to want. Hmm. How about that chapter there, Super Millennial? Man, that was something I had to learn real quick. Because I always said, I want to be this, and I want this, and I want that. And I always thought it was a good thing to want a lot of stuff or a lot of achievements and all this stuff. So that was that was one thing I, I really had to stop saying that. That was big in my vocabulary. Everything I did, I want to do this and I want that car and all that. And it never came <laughs> ever. <laughs> People do this very unconsciously. So everybody listening to this and listening to the Stress Mastery Podcast, those in the Stress Mastery community, guys, that higher goal lesson that we give you, the higher goal workshop in there, the process is all designed around eliminating the want. It's getting clarity of what you desire. 
But then it's about releasing it into the intention. That vision board that I gave you guys and showed you my vision board in the community, all of that is as is. Mm -hmm. I don't sweat. Now, I will tell you this. Things, when you understand this, everything in your life is going to shift and you got to be ready for the shift because when it starts to come in, it comes in and you can't dictate when it comes in and how it comes in. And you have to be able to accept the good when it comes in, even if it comes in a little bit fast, if even it comes in a little bit different, you have to be able to accept that because that's another message to the universe. Wanting is the lack program that we talk about. The lack program is want. So when I talk to you guys about the lack program, listen to what he said on defining the word want. To be without lack, to be in destitute or needy, a defect of character, a fault, to be absent, to be deficient or lacking, to fail, not to be sufficient, to fall or come short, to lack. So when we talk in stress mastery, it's the lack program that we're talking about when we talk about want. Now, we've taught you guys on the stages of development. When you end stage one, your ego has a base in the wants. Think about what has a base in the wants. The ego, the programming, those wants of approval. When you want approval, that's when you go into competition because you want to be seen. Seeking. Yeah. You're seeking. When you want security, it means you believe you don't have security. You can never, ever get it. It's impossible. Why? Because you're living in fear. Mm -hmm. The want sets the state. The state sets the vibration. The vibration is what will create your reality. To me, this one chapter is one of the most important things you can learn because it's so ingrained in us, especially in the West. Because I know we're in, in 100 plus countries, but in the West, we always want the new phone. We want the new thing. We want status. How many of you want to lose weight? I tell every single person. If you want to lose weight, you'll never lose weight. It's impossible. How many times have I said that, David? I haven't quite been able to explain it until this chapter. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's crazy because um, about four years ago, uh, Lee Kellogg, if you're in the community, you guys know who she is. She's been on the podcast. She, when I started, I always said, want. I want that Lamborghini. I want this. She had me, every time I would comment something or post something in the old community, she would comment, will, I will get that. I will do this. I will do. And that changed in my head because the want was, yeah, I want that. But it didn't have any action behind it. it. It was just the thought that was there. The will was saying, I'm going to do what needs to be done to achieve that. And like like you were saying, no matter what the, the journey of the travel that goes to it, you're willing to go through that. And it's very specific when you say it like that versus just, oh, I want. I always tell people, you want to be a speaker, speak. You mm -hmm. want to be it, you want to write, you want to be an author, write. You want to be a coach, teach. You want to be a business owner, open a business. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah, because talk less, do more. You, but it's a state. So mm -hmm. I love the analogy he gave of being hungry. Because if you slow that down and break it apart, you want to eat. But then you move into a different state. You're no longer wanting. You're now preparing the food. Mm -hmm. And now you're eating the food. And now you're done. Well, it's everything's the same way. You have to move out of the want. That's why we talk about getting clarity. Now, I'm not going to use that anymore. I'm going to say clarity of what you desire. I'm actually going to change the language yeah. in, in some of the things. But you got to get clarity. This is what I desire. And then... You can plant the seeds of intention. That's what higher goal setting, that's outcome-based goals. They put you in a state of want. That's why people are never satisfied because they keep you wanting something. But identity-based goals, they become your identity. What is the difference between outcome-based goals and identity-based goals? The state that you're in. That's what... 
Gandhi was teaching here about state. And you think it's not a big difference. It's everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. As long as you have a lack program, you're stuck in want and you will struggle. Because it's impossible to get what you want. Yeah, I love the the thought of uh, identity based, especially being your state, because the stuff that I was wanting, you know, three, four years ago, that was such a low energy state of what I was asking or trying to get versus the things that I will achieve, the things that I have clarity in now. And that's because the state of the person that I was progressing was there. If, If I just stood with the same wants from three, four years ago. I would not survive what we're doing right now. No, no, no impossible. You would. <laughs> you would not. And that, and that, I think this. Like when I said, I've said a couple of times that this is a powerful chapter. People, yeah. this is a power. In fact, listen to this podcast again. It's there. It's the whole chapter. Listen to it. Read it. Study it. If you do not understand it, contact me. Mm-hmm. You can contact me through Bill at livingrightwithbillcourtright.com. It's my email. Or in the community, you can DM me if you don't want to talk on the board. But ask so I can explain this to you because it's that powerful. You release the lack program by simply stopping the want. And believe me, when you start to look at this and that awareness, you're going to be shocked at how many times you say, hey, I want this. Yeah. Oh, I want that. It's just something that we say unconsciously. But the only way you break that starts with awareness. And then you want to create the skills, right? How do you do that? Starts with the awareness. And then the practices of every time you say it, cancel. No, desire. You literally say it. I I want to do this. No, cancel that. I desire to do this. And you literally say it out loud if you can because you are then dictating what you want in the subconscious mind. And eventually what happens is it becomes a skill. In other words, you master it and don't have to think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, consistency. The same way we built it into our vocabulary is the same way you're going to get it out and change into what's going to actually help you manifest what you want. It's not the word, people. Yeah. People think it's the word. They think, oh, you're just playing with words. No. No. (laughs) You're playing with vibration. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that this week. This whole week we talked, yesterday's episode, that's all we talked about was vibration. And that's what it is. It's the state you're in. Remember, the human being's only in one of two states. They're either in judgment and reaction, which is want, that means mm-hmm. they judging they don't have it, yeah. right? Or they're an awareness of response. That's desire. They desire it. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm-hmm. You got anything else? No, it, like you said. There's uh, not much to say in this episode. And it's short. And it's the shorter episode. You know, excuse to not listen to it again and really ask yourself the questions. But also, like Bill said, if you have questions that, you know, you're not able to answer, it's not c- clear enough for you, ask us. I mean, it's, it's a powerful, powerful chapter. I desire that the Packer organization <laughs> pull your head out of your butt and get that man taken care of. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission. You're evil, by the way. Did I anybody ever say, tell you that? I didn't say nothing. You have been horrible this whole episode ever since that news came out. Look, I got. Have a, you been mean? I got a couple thousands of people on my side over here. Have you here. been mean? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Okay. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. Links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay stay inspired. inspired.